Okay, so moving on to our final part for chapter number one, for, for, for chapter number one, for the chapter of data representation. For this chapter, the final part that we have to talk about is something called character sets, okay? And we'll talk about it uh, and see how it works, okay? So what we're talking about is we're talking about when you press a key on your keyboard, okay, when you press a key, any key that you press on your keyboard, your keyboard is an input device, okay? So when you press a key, data is being fed into your computer. Okay, using an input device, you are sending data in, you are sending data into your computer. Okay, so you press the letter A, for example, but that is understood by your computer as a stream of ones and zeros. Okay, so every character you press on your keyboard represents a sequence of binary numbers. Okay, so when you press a key, that sequence of binary numbers is sent, your processor understands it and then gives you a output. Okay, right. The computer cannot recognize any characters, okay? So any of the characters that you press, when you press C, your computer does not understand it as C. Your computer understands C as a sequence of binary numbers. When you press a special character such as the at symbol or the hashtag symbol or the exclamation mark, your computer does not understand it as a symbol. Your computer understands it, like I told you, as a sequence or a series of binary numbers. That's why your computer understands it, okay? Right. Now, the defined list of characters recognized by a computer's hardware and software is known as its character set, okay? So now what has happened is for the characters that you can enter into your computer, we have something called a character set. So character set is basically where it defines what each character is equal to, okay? The binary value of each character. That is what is defined or that is what is represented in your character set, okay? I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Let me repeat what I just said again. So in your character set, okay, so we have something called a character set. And in this character set, it defines what each character is represented in binary. Okay, so what is A equal to in binary? What is B equal to in binary? What is hashtag equal to in binary? What is exclamation mark equal to in binary? What is the number 15 equal in binary or the number five equal in binary? That is what the character set represents or defines. Okay, now, you need to understand when it comes to producing computers and digital devices, it's not just one organization that's doing it. You have various companies producing their own computers, their own laptops, their own smartphones, tabs, and various digital devices, okay? So it's important that we have an industry standard, okay? So for this character set, we should have an industry standard where all computers follow the same character set. Otherwise, we are going to have problems, okay? When you press A in one computer and you press A in another computer, if you are going to have different binary values, that's going to be a big mess, okay? Which is why we have an industry standard where all computers use the same character set, okay? So all computers use the same character set, okay? So what is this standard known as? This standard is known as the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or we simply call it the ASCII code, okay? So the ASCII code is the standard, okay? Is the standard for the character set, okay? For a computer's character set, okay? Right, originally the ASCII code consisted of seven bits and so 128 characters could be represented, okay? All of the lower and uppercase English characters, punctuation marks and control actions such as uh, backspace, shift, you know, shift on, shift off, they were all represented. Okay, so initially in the ASCII code, all the simple letters and capital letters, or we say lowercase, uppercase, all those characters, special characters such as uh, exclamation, at symbol, hashtag, dollar symbol, all these characters, okay? And then even things like backspace, shift on, shift off, okay? All of these characters were represented in the ASCII code initially, okay? Initially, all of these were represented in the ASCII code, okay? However, so over here, I have given you a simple table Okay, so you can see, for example, when you press space, when you press space by your computer, the decimal value of 32 is converted into binary. Okay, the decimal value of 32 is converted into binary. That's how your computer understands space bar as. When you press simple A, for example, when you press simple A, your computer gets a binary value of 97. Okay, so when you press A, the binary value of 97 is given to your computer. When you, for example, press capital A, when you press capital A, the binary value of 65 is given to your computer. Okay, so this is what you call the ASCII code. It's a part of the ASCII code table. Okay, just a part of it. Okay, showing you the character sets. Okay, now 
we have something called extended ASCII. So extended ASCII uses 8-bit code. So it accommodates even more characters, okay? ASCII was using 7-bit codes, so it could represent 128. But extended ASCII is using an 8-bit code. So it allows uh, from 0 to 255 in denary or 0 to FF in hexadecimal, okay? Now, this gives us another 128 codes. So using ex extended ASCII, we get space to accommodate extra characters, more characters, okay? So this allows for characters in non-English alphabets, okay? So extended ASCII accommodates characters that do not exist in the English alphabet, okay? And for some graphical characters to be included as well, okay? So extended ASCII allows for even more characters to be included, okay? But then, but then ASCII code has a number of disadvantages. The main disadvantage is that it does not represent characters in non-Western language, for example, Chinese characters, okay? So ASCII uh, can accommodate up to a certain number of characters only. So it has a major disadvantage, which is it can't, for example, accommodate characters from other languages, okay? So for example, if you look at a Chinese language, ASCII may not support the characters in the Chinese language, okay? So we have a problem with ASCII. So the solution to ASCII, the solution to ASCII is what we call Unicode, okay? So Unicode supports so many much, I mean, so much more characters, even things like emojis are supported in Unicode, okay? So Unicode can represent all languages of the world, thus supporting many operating systems, search engines, and internet browsers used internationally, globally, around the world, okay? There is overlap with standard ASCII code, okay? So there are some similarities, okay? Some similarities between Unicode and ASCII code, which is the first 128 English characters, okay? But Unicode can support several thousand different characters in total, okay? So there are some characters that are similar in Unicode and ASCII code, but ASCII code can represent, a, sorry, Unicode, Unicode can represent a lot more characters, accommodates a lot more characters than ASCII code. Okay, so I hope you understood the difference between ASCII and UNI. Okay, so this is a standard that is being maintained. Okay, so that all computers will be able to exchange data using the same binary format. Okay, otherwise, if each computer uses a different format, it's going to be a complete mess. Okay, we will not be able to exchange files between devices. Okay, right. So with that, then we have come to the end of chapter one data representation. Okay, in the next video, we will be moving into chapter number two.